stealing and if you're not crediting it. And How do you feel about curation sites? Curation sites are cool because I think you're actually, you're moderating that and you're attributing back out you know, the sources that those things came from. So I don't have a problem with those. So, uh, Can I talk about curation? Well, uh, well, you don't have yeah, we'll talk about it at the end. Um, but yeah, curation sites are something we should definitely talk about because they're curation. Uh, C-U-R-A-T-I-O-N. It's essentially where um, somebody is you know, really passionate about a topic and they go out and gather up information from a bunch of different places and you know, stock it up in one place. Big difference between that and just you know, throwing up a feed on your site. I uh, had a conversation with an affiliate a couple weeks ago that called up and said, hey, I've had this site up for about a year. Uh, it hasn't really done anything for me. I've been bringing in a lot of, info, you know, bringing in a lot of content from other people's feeds, but nothing seems to be happening. It's like, well, what have you done? <laughs> well, I haven't done anything. Well, you got what you paid for. You know, you didn't put any work into it. You can't expect to get anything out of it. So write your own unique content. Or you know, if you want to bring on writers, if you can get some other people to contribute, great. Just make sure it's unique content to your site. And do that before you put your ads up. Your own domain is recommended strongly, but not required. Um, there are some ways you can do affiliate marketing without having your own domain. Personally, I think that if you're going to be serious about it, and you're going to make a commitment to making some money this way, you should probably go out and invest in a hosting account. I mean, worst case, you're going to be looking at maybe 100 bucks a year, and you can put as many domains on there as you want. So go out there, get yourself a hosting account, start building out one project, and see if you can make it go. Commit to that. Um, there are some other options. There, yeah. Right. So if you yeah. go and start building up all of these great um, sites on, on something that you're not hosting and they go out of business right. and you didn't catch that email they sent three days before they closed right. up shop, you're SLL. Yeah, and I mean, you don't want to build your business on something that somebody else owns. It's just not a smart thing to do long term. So go out, get your own hosting account, get your own domain. You can play around with, with uh, Squidoo lenses if you want to. I've seen people that have made money uh, building out little content things on Squidoo. I've seen people do stuff with Facebook groups. Uh, the other thing you have to take a look at, at is if you're going to use these third parties, what do they allow? Because in a lot of cases, I mean, people used to try to get started doing that on MySpace. Well, MySpace didn't allow affiliate links, so they stripped out all the affiliate tracking. And so anybody that built themselves an affiliate you know, business promoting stuff on, on uh, MySpace got filtered out. Um, I think um, WordPress.com does the same thing. So you want to get your own platform that you're in control of, uh, that you can build out, that you can have you know, total accountability for moving forward. It also goes a long way towards establishing your credibility with affiliate managers when you're applying for the program because if you're looking to promote totally on third-party platforms, probably not as high a value as somebody that's going to build out something of their own. And at the very least, I'm going to question the commitment. Um, it's going to help to have you, you know, on the next piece as well. Um, use on-domain email. So once you get your domain, use a, you know, uh, affiliate one at mydomain.com or you know something like that. Check it with some frequency. Um, you might get some extra emails to it sometimes, but you know that's the breaks. Set up your filtering and you'll be fine. But it just goes to another le level of credibility for domain ownership and just how serious you are about the whole thing. I get a lot of applications from. You know, cheesy applications from Gmail, a lot of them from Hotmail, a lot of them from overseas, and you're just better off using your own domain if you can get away with it. You certainly can use Gmail to aggregate all that stuff if you want to, if you want to use it as a time-saving tool, but get a domain of your own. And uh, definitely feel free to contact the affiliate manager any way you can. Um, if you don't find any ways that you can contact the affiliate manager, I look for another program to work with. Because if they're not putting themselves out there, if they're going to be responsible for helping you be successful, and they're not putting their contact information out there, do you want to work with them? You know, it's just to me, it seems like kind of a no-brainer. I, I just never cease to be amazed when I go into my affiliate account at Commission Junction and look around how many affiliate programs don't have a contact specified, don't have an email address. I mean, it just seems kind of silly. I try to make all my information available. I give my, my phone number, my cell phone number, my Twitter handle. I mean, I have a Facebook group. It, you almost can't help but get a hold of me if you want to. So it, professional affiliate managers should be that way. 
follow up. Um, there's sometimes a year like right now, or when we get into football bowl season, or uh, the final four for NCAA basketball, when we're just insane busy. And sometimes it takes us a while to get back on applications. I try to do my stuff within, you know, within 24 hours, but sometimes I get behind. If I'm at Affiliate Summit for four days, I might get behind. But if you haven't heard back, just keep following up with the manager until you get what you want. Um, next one's kind of, kind of one for me, think beyond the banner. Um, first thing everybody thinks about when they think affiliate marketing is, oh, I'm gonna slap up some banners on my site and make some money. That was pretty cool um, in 1997. And it works sometimes now, but not nearly as much as, you, as you'd think. Um, if you want to get approved for my programs automatically, show me something where you've put some time into it. Um, like I say in the example here, um, give me some content, give me some product links and articles. So if you're talking about you know, football jerseys, show me a big picture of a jersey that you pulled out of my data feed or off my site and linked back. Um, show me a text link call to action at the end of that post saying, hey, if you like this jersey, you can pick up one now at Fanatics, just click here. Because people click more on content than they do on banners. Um, do some storefronts. I mean, you can jump into ShareASale. Um, ShareASale has a, a feature called Make a Page, where you can build out a page that you can copy and paste into your site in about, I don't know, two minutes. And that's if you're a beginner. So there are some tools out there that are great. Pop Shops is another one that's great that lets you build out at least you know, a getting started kind of a storefront. You can progress to heavy, heavier duty tools if you want to beyond that, but it's a good way to get started. But you can show me that you're not just gonna slap up banners and you're actually gonna be smart and aggressive and try to pull people in in ways that actually work. You're gonna get approved in a heartbeat and any affiliate manager that would turn you down is a fool. I do. I got to mention Golden Can. Golden Can is beyond easy too. I was, I mean, we had a big, in our affiliate uh, Facebook group, the day after the last session, we, I came in and started talking about that and I ended up pulling, you know, pulling them in there to do some support and it was great. I mean, I love showing off tools to affiliates. Um, put your best foot forward. I mean, I, you'd just be amazed at how many times we, we see an application that's got a bunch of park domains. It got a bunch of stuff that's halfway done. That's loaded up, you know. That's loaded up into the network profile, and if that's all I've got to go, if you know, if, if that's all I've got to go on, you know, where are you leaving yourself? Um, I understand that you know people are working on projects, but to me, put up the stuff that's ready to look at, or be willing to follow up with me and say, hey, I realize that what I've got up there is not really complete right now, but this is what I'm working on. This is when it should be done. Um, this is what I'm looking for from you to help make it work. Um, know the rules to the program. Uh, this is a big one with me. Uh, we don't allow paid search, okay? So if you're an affiliate that's gonna do your promotion using paid search advertising on Google, and that's everything you talk about in your network profile and you apply to my program, i would be like, wow, can't work with him. Why don't you allow it? Um, it's, it we have a huge paid search department ourselves and we, we just don't want the competition. You know, we, can, we have uh, a lot of people that are putting a lot of money into that and so we just, uh, we don't need the affiliates to fill up the extra slots. And every company has their own decision on that. Some allow it, some let you bid on their trademarks. We just don't allow any of it. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. If I had a conversation with you and the conversation sounded good, chances are I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in. I'm an example. <laughs> yeah. I met Wade last time. And he proved me after we talked about what I'm doing. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Easy. Right. Um, most important thing is bring something to the table. Um, build people-friendly you know, people -friendly sites. Uh, Google's getting pretty good at determining when they're getting scammed uh, with, with people trying to get search engine traffic. And they keep getting a little better every time. Um, you keep reading about you know, the Panda update that happened a few months back where a lot of people that had built up a lot of content that you know, most of them was kind of questionable. They were doing a lot of creative linking and a lot of creative copywriting that wasn't really friendly to people. It wasn't what people wanted to read. So Google gets their value by presenting content that people want to read in a ranked fashion. So they're going to do everything they can to keep in front of that. If you go out there and write for people, you're going to be fine. And if you learn some, you know, some SEO tips above and beyond from there, you can do really good stuff. But if you just go out there and write good content for people, you're gonna come up in good shape and chances are I'm gonna take a look at your application and say, hey, cool, they write great content. Um, let's work with them. 
keep in mind that we're really, really, really busy, especially people that run big programs and OPMs. So people that are you know, OPMs are outsourced program managers, people that might be running, I don't know, how many of you guys are running at affiliatemanager.com? How many programs do you run, Michael? 21. 21, okay, they're running 21 programs. So in a lot of cases, we don't have a lot of time to look over applications. So put that best foot forward, show us something and you'll get in, otherwise we're gonna have to, have to do a little bit of following up. How many networks are you on, Wayne? I'm on two. Yeah. yeah, so that's a whole lot of work yeah. in people. Yeah, so try to, you know, try to have that in mind when you're putting these things together and really put your best foot forward and show us some good stuff. Um, red flags. Uh, I actually wanted to do a few more of these, but I, I just couldn't round up enough images in time. But um, some things I wanted to show everybody. Um, <laughs> banner farms, okay? Talked about this a little bit earlier when you go up and throw up a bunch of images. Banner farms don't get traffic and they don't get trust from shoppers. If you go to this site, that's a website. yeah, that's a website. <laughs> what are the chances that you're actually gonna click on one of those banners? If you're not gonna click on those banners, you're not gonna make any money. So people that have sites like this do not get approved. They get a very quick rejection letter because I'll move on to somebody that built some content. Uh, these ones, I don't know about you guys, but I'm seeing about 10 of these a day now. And it's probably in CJ alone. Um, there's people out there who are selling these get rich quick prefabricated sites it does not take that much work to build your own site on WordPress or a similar platform. I mean, it, you can invest a couple of hours of, of reading online, watch some videos, go to bloggingabcs.com and figure out how to set up your own WordPress powered blog or website on your own domain. Buying stuff like this, the only people that make money with these sites are the people that sell them. Seriously, it's like 30 bucks for every sucker that comes in and buys one of these sites thinking they're gonna make money fast. Every affiliate manager that I know, I know, <laughs> go looking for a refund. Every affiliate manager that I talk to, that stuff doesn't go anywhere. It's, a, it's the quickest, yeah, it's the quickest rejection. Yeah. Can you send me your contact? Yeah. Got some more stuff to sell, but yeah, so I mean, stuff like this, if you're an affiliate, invest some time, learn how to use some kind of a content management system get some help doing it. Um, there's a lot of really helpful people in this business. Like I mentioned earlier, bloggingabcs.com. Deb Carney has podcasts about how to build better blogs. Or you can go to uh, geekcast.fm. Yep. There's about 30 some odd podcasts yeah. all available for free. All um, the blogs that are marketing related. Yeah, there's really good stuff too. Geekcast.fm, G-E-E-K, cast.fm. Yeah. What? Um, Geekcast.fm. Yeah, I'll write them down. I've actually got them later in the thing. In the. Okay. There we go. Okay. Uh, next one is turnkey coupon sites. Um, I'm not seeing so many of these lately, but a couple, like about three, four months ago, I was seeing probably 20 of these things a day, where somebody was out there selling. You know, you, here's your coupon site. It's ready to go buy it, slap it up. Um, these aren't getting approved either, okay? If you're, gonna do, if you're gonna run a coupon site, you need to niche out like crazy because there's a lot of really, really big companies right now running coupon sites. Getting mind share, getting any kind of penetration into that market is rough. And if you're not niching out on something super, super tight, you're not gonna be able to get yourself in there with a standalone coupon site. So. Resist the urge to go out and spend a couple hundred bucks and get your own standalone coupon site unless you've got a really solid marketing plan for it and a really tight niche to work into because, once again, most of the affiliate managers I know, we're not approving these. Oops. Um, please, please, for the love of God, spare me the flash intros and the music playing and the videos playing automatically. Um, newsflash, people shop at work, okay? If you have one of these things on your site, if you have the little flash animation going on, um, or you have like loud music start playing, your favorite hip hop tune, whatever, um, you're gonna get somebody embarrassed. At the very, you know, very best case, they're just gonna close their browser out and they're never gonna see you again. And you've wasted an opportunity. 